Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to European Truck Simulator 2 and welcome back to Balvi in Latvia. I'm going with Balvi, right? Because it's got the A, the Balvi A, the Latvia A. I don't know, could be wrong. Could be Balvi. And if so, I do apologize. So first thing you can see, obviously, we got this funky trailer on here. Hell yeah, we do. I saw this in the Steam Workshop and decided to get it. It's... I guess it's based on a real uh, Mercedes-Benz aerodynamic concept trailer. So if we were going to role play it, I'd say uh, Mercedes got in touch with the portable gamer. Said, hey man, why don't you do some road testing for this trailer? I said, you got it. Uh, and I noticed this in ATS too. I feel like our corporate blue that I throw on is just quick and dirty on the trailer. Because that's not a skin. That's just a, a selected blue. I feel like it's done a little creeping. It's creepered. And it does not entirely match our corporate blue that we have on the skin that we placed in the truck. I don't know if that's me. I don't know if something's different. I don't know. So, yep, I notice it. And it, it is uh, my OCD does not like it. So, yeah, this is a super cool trailer. And it is in the Steam Workshop. A lot of options on it when you're building it uh, at the trailer dealer. But super cool. Thought we'd give it a try. Right, let's hop in here. We're going to haul some containerized trees from this here nursery. We're gonna haul these to, moment please, I wanna say it just right, bubba it. In fact, we can do it right here. We do this and then we do that and then we do that. Uh, Chernyakovsk, which is that little Russian pocket, that little pocket of Russia out on the Baltic Sea. You'll see when we get there. Oh, I can show you on the map right now, moment. Yeah, we're there. Yeah, it's this little, like, this is Russia here. This is Russia here. And then this is not Russia. And then Russia is over here again. So it's like a little, uh, you know what I'm saying? A little port? I don't know. I don't know. Probably has something to do with World War II. Right. Uh, let's get rid of this. We have a GPS. So we will make that go away. Put her in gear. Here we go. We got about uh, 20 minutes, I think. No lift axle on this truck, no lift axle on this trailer, so we don't need to worry about any of that. But yeah, I, I saw that in the Steam Workshop and I thought, I'm enjoying buying and building and owning trailers as much as I am the trucks. I really didn't think I would when it when it was first announced. I thought, oh, come on, come on, SCS. That's a gimmick, I ain't buying it. I'm, well, I literally had no intention of ever buying a trailer, but I kind of like it now, I have to say. It's fun. It's always been fun building things in this game. Game? Sim. What do you say? Oh, here, and I can show you this, too. Before we leave, let me get us in a good gear. Check this out. Oh, can you see it? There it is. There's your turn signal. You're not going to miss that one. So, very safe trailer as well. So, uh, let's get on the road here. And I got some things on my mind. I've been thinking about some things. Man, I'm always thinking about some things. I'm a thinker. You may have picked up on that. Always thinking about things. Some of it is the OCD. Some of it is the autism. Some of it, I guess, is just the way I am. I don't know, man. I always think about stuff. And what I've been thinking about this week is franchises and where we're at as gamers with the concept of a franchise. And what really got me thinking about it is I got the Anderson, Mr. Anderson. I got the, the Anderson DLC in Farm Sim. And I, I have to say, I mean, it's it was 10 bucks. It's all right. It's buggy. It's got some bugs in it. But there was also, uh, there's a specific piece of equipment. And I found you can't use it on every map, but you have no way of knowing that before you buy it. You know, they don't really make it clear before you buy it, and then even after you buy it, it's just it's giants. It's just the way they do business. And, you know, I, I think about giants, and I think, are they, are they struggling? Struggling? Or, wow, that's a lot of traffic. Holy smokes. Are they struggling, or is it a ca cash grab? And 
I wouldn't say that either one, you know what, if all these trucks are turning, yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, don't help me too much. No, don't help me right there. There you go. You get out of the way. Yes, now we got it. Beautiful. That actually worked out. I thought we were going to be there a lot longer. I feel like if, if giants were going to make a cash grab, they would just start making smartphone games with boobs in them, right? That's a quick and dirty way to make a lot of money. It really is. And I don't see them doing that. I, I feel like they are focused on the Farm Sim franchise and good on them. But they do seem to be struggling. And the fact that they would release a broken DLC for a game that is arguably not even done yet tells me they need money. And I don't know that. I'm just speculating on that. And the thing is, that's cool. You know, there's nothing wrong with not being successful in your business and not making as much money as you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. And some of the biggest companies in the world, carefully, carefully, some of the biggest companies in the world struggle from time to time. It's hard to run a business. Most businesses fail, typically within the first couple of years. So, you know, when you hear that Twitter is really struggling or uh, what was the other one that I just heard the other day? Uber has some problems. There's a big bank in the United States called Wells Fargo. They have nothing but problems. It's hard to run a business. It really is. And the thing about business, and I've, I've worked with clients that have exactly this problem, is they get their business up and running and then something changes. Something changes in the world. And it's like... Uh, I don't want to change my business. We we got it running, you know, and it, it took a lot of work. And on some level, we kind of got lucky, you know. I don't want to start over and take all those chances again. I just want to keep doing what got us here. Even if what got us here won't keep us alive, I don't want to. You know what I mean? So, and I don't, again, I don't know that that's what's going on with Giants. But I feel like Giants is their cash poor, which is why they're releasing DLC again for a game that's not even done yet. And I feel like they're kind of locked into Farm Sim and they, they don't really have the ability to do anything different or new. Okay, that's cool. Where does that leave us as gamers with a franchise like Farm Sim? And it doesn't have to be Farm Sim. I mean, that's an example that's close to me because I, I like Farm Sim and I play it a lot. It doesn't have to be Farm Sim can be any franchise so you think about something you know at the top of the, the top of the list has to be I would say Madden probably Madden or uh, maybe Grand Theft Auto that they are for lack of a better word like they are pre-approved they have won the Daytona 500 and they can they can drive in it every year they won the Masters they got the green jacket Hall of Fame so it doesn't matter as long as it's got the Madden title on it, as long as it's got the GTA title on it. Sorry, I'm concentrating. You know, I get quiet when I concentrate. As long as it's got that, that badge on there, as long as it's got that title, people will buy it. People will buy it a lot. So they're okay. But... I feel franchises like that understand that this can fade. This can fade in time. And so we have to do our best to never drop the ball, even though we know that if we... Crazy. Wow. There's a lot of, like, speeding tight traffic. Holy smokes. Okay, I'm so glad we made it through there with no contact and no tickets. Wow. So Electronic Arts knows if they drop the ball with Madden, or if they release a Madden that is, you know, uh, maybe not quite up to snuff, they've got a little bit of a cushion. They can coast on that for a while, you know, for a year, maybe two, but they need to really, like, continue innovating and bringing it strong. Well, it's Electronic Arts. They got deep pockets, right? Grand Theft Auto, we're waiting on GTA 6. Well, I'm not. I don't, I don't play those kinds of games, but I understand it's a, it's a massive title, and it's going to be... I mean, GTA 5 is the most successful video game in history, and it's one of the most profitable entertainment franchises in history, just really based off that one title, the GTA 5 title. So GTA 6 is, is heavily anticipated, and if it, if it beats 
GTA 5 if it exceeds that that sales level powerhouse man so where does that leave us as gamers and and what do we expect from developers and what is it reasonable to expect from developers and you know I mean for me if you got my money I want to be impressed now as a consumer yeah there's a certain level of of expectation on me to do my research and you know if I uh, use a smartphone game as an example if I buy a smartphone game right and I find it to be disappointing well you know that's on me what were you what were you thinking what were you expecting when you bought a smartphone game but if I buy something like Fallout 76 which I did not buy again that's not my kind of game to play but had I bought Fallout 76 myself and a lot of other people very disappointed uh, what was the other one uh, Anthem very disappointed so yeah it's on you as a consumer to do your research you know make sure you know what you're getting into but I feel like it's also there's some responsibility on the part of the developer to deliver you know you got my money where's my product where is what you promised me and when you think about e3 and these big rollouts and you know they, they straight up tell you like this is actual gameplay footage and you know it's this and it's that and and then it it's delivered and it's like oh this sucks that's not that's not on the consumer for not having done their research they did do their research they went to e3 they you know they looked into it and i wouldn't say they got lied to that's too strong a word they got business somebody gave them the business a business gave them the business is what happened so when it comes to franchises what do we do as consumers when we're disappointed and you know MotoGP 19 is coming out MotoGP 18 they sort of supported it this is milestone they sort of supported it for a while and then they kind of stopped supporting it they're, they're, the game has bugs and issues and there hasn't been a patch in forever well of course not. They're working on MotoGP 19. So, something like server support. You know, if you're on multiplayer, and uh, let me see, good, uh, good traffic circle etiquette here. So I want to be in this lane to go past this one, but then I want to go back over. Yeah, because it's one lane exiting. Okay, I think I did that. Hmm. I think I did that all right. There goes my voice. Right. Um, yeah, what the hell was I talking about? Uh, oh, man, I completely forgot. I mean, I know the, the broad topic that I was talking about. But I lost my uh, I lost my thread when we came to that traffic circle. Uh, the, the MotoGP 19. Yeah. Um, I mean, multiplayer server support. I played uh, The Division for a while. Really enjoyed it. It, it got it got kind of stale once my characters were maxed out I have to say it got kind of stale but I really enjoyed it while I played it and that is definitely a primarily a multiplayer game well when Division 2 came out people were asking how long are they going to keep the servers up and running and the answer was a long long time and the, the reason is that the fewer people are playing it the less servers you need up and running so at a certain point and that is uh, Ubisoft. That, that's a pretty big company. They got a couple bucks to rub together. So at a certain point, you know, two years from now, five years from now, there's really not going to be that many people on division servers at any given moment. Maybe they can just have one or two. And what's that going to cost them? You know, a few thousand bucks a month. They got the money. You know, they're not going to sweat that. So, so for something like that, you know, legacy support, legacy server support. Uh, you know, are they going to be patching MotoGP 18 in 2025? No, of course they're not. Of course they're not. Is that bad customer service? No, not at all. Uh, sir? Oh, dear. There he goes. He's a very cautious driver. I don't blame him. So, no, uh, MotoGP 18 will not be... They will not be releasing patches and bug fixes in 2025, and I wouldn't expect them to. You know, there is there is customer service, and then there is, like, above and beyond. It's... We, we have to be reasonable as consumers. So, 
that scenario, no, I don't expect them to do that. But do I expect them to maybe release one big final patch before they drop their new game? Yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice. And, and I guess that leads us to the next question, which is where do we go as gamers if we're disappointed in a franchise? Because here's the thing to keep in mind. Right now, I'm in a small town in the American South. I live in California. Uh, technically, I live in California. And I live up north in California on Lake Tahoe. And I've also lived in Los Angeles. And I have to say, as much as I love making these videos for you, I mean, I just love making these videos, period. But I also like making them for you, and I like... It's going to sound really corny. Don't laugh. But I like this time we get to spend together. This is a really cool part of my day. But I'll tell you straight up, if I was in Los Angeles, if I was in... South Lake Tahoe, I would probably not be making these videos, and I certainly wouldn't be making as many of them, and the reason is, I'm, I don't make any money doing this, this is a hobby. I would love to make money at it, who would not want to make money playing video games? But at the moment, this is just a hobby. I've not made dime one. So I'm not saying I would rather be doing anything other than this, I'm saying right now I have the time and the opportunity to do this, but if I was in Lake Tahoe and spending all my time in the mountains or on the lake or skiing or mountain biking or climbing, I would have a lot less time to do this. So when we talk about, you know, if it can't be this franchise, then it has to be another franchise. At that point, what we're saying is, I need to play a certain type of video game, right? Like I need to play a shooter or I need to play a racing sim or I need to, you know, and I would prefer to play this franchise, but this, this version, this release sucked. So I'm going to find another one to play because I have to do this. So at the top level, I think we need to recognize that nobody has to video game. Well, some people do. Some people have very unique circumstances in their lives and they actually, like, it's all they've got. And I say that with all love and respect. I'm not being an ass when I say that. I know there's some people that it's all they've got, you know. So that's cool. They don't have the option, but for most of us, we can just go do something else. Video games are, they're a hobby, they're elective. So once we get past that, then we agree that, you know, if we're going to choose to, to play a game, if we're going to choose to play a genre or a franchise, then we will, we will stay in that, uh, yeah, I guess genre is the best way to say it, even if we don't stay in that franchise. So use racing as an example. I've been way into iRacing to the point where I've played some of my other race sims. And I get it when people say, you know, the physics in this game or in that sim, the physics are really bad. I never understood that. Like, physics? How can the physics be bad? You know, I don't, I don't know what it feels like to drive a race car. I don't know if this is right or wrong. Maybe not right or wrong, but I hopped in a, a sim last night. I won't say which one, but I hopped in a sim last night and I realized when I'm in iRacing, I feel like I'm actually driving a car. I feel like I'm controlling a car. When I'm in this sim, I feel like I'm playing a video game. I guess that's what people mean by good physics and bad physics. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be about cautious. It doesn't necessarily have to be about you know, accurate tire modeling and that sort of thing. That's the minutia, but it's got to feel like you're driving a car, and, and some sims don't. So, you know, using racing as an example, does that mean that if iRacing released a, a version or a patch and it was just all messed up, and I had to stay in in my racing sims, that I would have to go to another another franchise that is maybe not as good? You know, like how would how would I handle that, and what does what does iRacing, I believe they are their own company, like the name of the developer and the app are the same. But what do they owe me? Moment, please. Wow, this traffic is crazy. I can't believe we have not had any contact yet. What does a company like iRacing owe me as not just a consumer, but as a franchise developer. They, in this case, they are the franchise developer. You see what I mean? Do they owe me anything to continue giving me my racing Jones? 
you know, or is it just, it's like a one shot deal. Every month I pay them 12 bucks and the content that I bought from them, in fact, it, it says this in, in, the, uh, in the, the end user license agreement, it says that I don't own that content that I buy from them. They're just licensing it to me. And I think the reason they do that is so they don't have to give me a refund if they ban me. They're not gonna ban me, are they? Hope not. There we go. Let's get the right gear. Get the turn here. But you see what I'm saying. I give them twelve bucks a month. I've spent, I don't know, at this point, probably several hundred dollars on tracks. I just have a couple of cars because I there's really only a couple of cars that I want to drive anyway. But there's a lot of tracks you gotta you gotta get if you want to road race. So what do they owe me? You know. Or is it just, is it that simple? Every month I give them 12 bucks, every month I get to play the game. And if they update it, if they patch it, if they screw it up, so what, man? We don't owe you anything. It's a it's a month to month thing. And I guess the, the culmination of that is, is reading in forums and reading on Reddit and reading on Steam, like how people feel about Farming Simulator 19 and the consensus of serious players is, this game sucks. It does. It's it's broken for one thing, and even the parts of it that aren't broken are uh, they're they're not doing anything with it. You know, it's FS19. It's just FS17 with with slower graphics and a lot of glare and horses, the Skyrim horses that float and glitch through walls and fences. Who asked for that? You know, why why wouldn't they just clean up and tighten up FS17 or whatever, whatever, and uh, and call it good. They, they really dropped the ball. We're getting some stutter here. I'm seeing it. I know you're seeing it. They really dropped the ball, and everybody knows it. So where are we at with that? Because there, no there is no other farm franchise. Ooh. I was looking at my mini-map, and I was just about to blow through that yield sign because I, I saw we didn't need to make our turn until the next you know what I mean the next one right up there ahead of us this is some dicey traffic wow I'm trying to poke my nose out here and then I'll deal with the other the other side okay everybody everybody beautiful oh trickery I see what you're about A lot of stutter. I think we're loading some tiles. So you you see what I'm getting at, you know? Giants doesn't owe me anything, but at the same time, Giants owes me something because they've got my money, but they've also got my loyalty. Oh, this is terrible. I do apologize. We haven't had problems like this for quite a while. We are really getting some getting some goofiness right now. I don't know if we're. I don't know if we're loading tiles or if we're uh, having some problems or if uh, Windows decided to update in the background like it does, like it does. So, so the takeaway from that and my conclusion as I've been reflecting on this is it's both. Giants doesn't owe me shit. They don't owe me anything, <laughs> you know. Uh, they really don't. And as far as how they develop their game, that's their business. And if I don't want to buy it on day one, I have the option to not buy it on day one, do my research, hear what people are saying about it, and not buy it at all. If I choose to buy a game on day one, I'm going to have day one bugs. Everybody knows that. If, if they get fixed, fantastic. If they don't, they don't. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes day one bugs, just they're just a part of, part of an app, part of a sim. This has been a really, I have to say, kind of an exciting trip. I was not, I thought we were, oh Jesus. I thought we were just gonna do a little, little deedly deet down the highway here and this has become like exciting. Even without the frame drops, this is exciting. It's a good, it's a good render though. It's crystal clear. It's just a little, uh, oh, you know what? I wonder if it's, traffic is heavy. Is it not looking around? There's a lot of trucks. A lot of trucks. A lot of traffic. Okay. I wonder if we're just loading a lot of trucks up. You know what I mean? Truck skins. Because we got them jazzy cat packs. 
interesting. So, so that's one side of it. No, no developer owes me anything. Uh, they owe me uh, a reasonable product for the amount of money that I give them, and they don't owe me anything else. Legacy support for uh, for multiplayer servers, as an example. Okay, you know, when it's done, it's done. We didn't promise you how long those would last. So when it's over, it's over. And if it's over uh, in five years or if it's over in five days, whatever. You know, that's show me in the contract where it says when you buy this game, we promise to keep our servers up for X number of years or whatever. It's not there. It's never there. And even something like uh, like iRacing, you know, I don't even own that content. They license it to me. So if I if I get banned, no refund, no nothing. And I'm assuming that also covers them if they do close down their servers. iRacing I'm talking about in this case. If iRacing closes down their servers, it's like, well, shoot, man, I got all this all this content that I can't use anywhere. Yeah, well, so? <laughs> so that is, that is one side of it, and that is definitely, um, that's business, you know? That's just business. The other side of it is, I don't want to say a human thing, and the problem with saying something is, you know, oh, it's just a, that's a, a social contract issue, or that's just, you know, the way people ought to treat each other, or, or whatever. The reason that doesn't fly, and the reason we have contracts in business in the first place, is because everybody's different. So to say, well, that's just the way people should treat each other. Well, people are all different. And they all treat each other differently. That's that's why we need end user license agreements. Because if we just said, well, you know, we don't have any hard and fast policies. We just try to do the right thing. What the hell does that mean? The right thing means something different to everybody. So what what I'm going to say as a kind of a, a counterpoint, you know, the two sides of this. One side, as I as I just kind of went off on. One side is it's just business. It's just business. But the other side is, uh, no, it's not just business. You've got my money, and you've built up expectations, and we do, uh, we do form communities, and we do have a relationship with developers, and we do, you know, uh, Madden. They've been making Madden for what, 25 years? If moment. If it was getting close to the announcement for the next Madden, like who's going to be on the box and everything, that's hilarious. We still say box. I still say box. Who's going to be on the cover? Like we're buying a, we're buying a DVD down at GameStop and take it home and put it in the old uh, Nintendo 64. So I know Nintendo 64 didn't take DVDs. You know what? I'm, don't get cute. So uh, so they're getting ready to make the announcement. For the next Madden and they don't and they don't and you know time goes by and we're not hearing anything and we're not hearing anything and finally some reporter you know some uh, electronic entertainment media reporter reaches out to electronic arts and says hey we haven't had any information about the next release of Madden or FIFA if you want to use that as an example we haven't had any information about you know the next title I'm just curious what's going on. And the rep from Electronic Arts says, oh yeah, we're, we're done. We're not making that franchise anymore. That would be astounding, you know? That would be monumental. Because it's been such a part of the, the electronic, uh, electronic media or gaming landscape for like a quarter of a century. That's massive. And to just, for, for it to just disappear like that, I'm not saying that's going to happen, you, you understand it's a hypothetical, but for it to just disappear like that, that's kind of a what the hell moment, you know, and electronic arts, it's just business, you know, sorry, we decided to, to, to cut it off. We don't owe you anything, and it's like, yeah, you actually do, because you made something that is significant enough that you do owe us at least uh, an explanation. It'd be like if they didn't make the, uh, they're making the, the final three Star Wars movies, Disney is, they made the first two, 
I guess the third one is, is done, so maybe this is not the best example, but sure, we can use this as an example. They released the first two sequels, you know, and, uh, and then we just stop hearing about the third one. Somebody reaches out to Disney, says, hey, you know, how you doing with that third Star Wars movie? And they say, oh, yeah, we decided to cancel that. We're, we're not going to make that. Oh, what did I hit? What did I hit? I guess I clipped something. Ah, well, hopefully the, the cargo is okay. Hopefully the cargo is okay. This has been a very exciting trip, I have to say. This was just going to be a quick little jaunt. And it's become very, uh, very taxing. So you get what I'm saying. Disney, Disney says, no, we're not, we're not going to tie off the story. We're not going to end it. It's just going to stop. <laughs> we're going to do eight movies. Uh, we, you know, we got the, the original three, then we got the three prequels. Let's not talk about those. And then we, we made two sequels, and then we were going to make a third one where we just brought it all home, right? Or, or uh, Marvel, right? Endgame. Biggest movie ever. Biggest movie in history. Tied it. Tied off, what, 22 movies in the MCU? Suppose that doesn't happen. Right? We get Infinity War, there's the, the, the snap, right? And uh, and then they just end it there. And it's like, well, aren't you going to tie it off? And, and uh, Marvel says, no, no, we're done. We don't owe you anything. Yeah, you sort of do. You sort of do. So those are, those are the two sides. And I guess they're even. I guess they're balanced, you know? And uh, I don't know where I'm at with that. I guess on any given day I am there we go. Needed a little bit more wiper. I think on any given day, you know well, on any given day I can definitely choose to see either side. But also on any given day I don't know what side I might particularly come out on. Because this, uh, this farm sim thing, it's been pretty frustrating for me, I have to say. And one thing that I remind myself is I got plenty of other sims to play. And then another thing I remind myself of is I don't need to be playing these games at all. Uh, this is this is completely elective in my life. I'm not being... I'm not trying to be like some kind of tough guy when I say that. Like, I think we can still make this light. Nope. Oh. I'm not trying to be some kind of tough guy when I say that. Like, oh, you know, video games. I can take it or leave it. It is a big part of my life. And it's something that I really, really enjoy. But as far as... You know, the hierarchy, the ladder of what matters to me. Obviously, at the top is going to be people. You know, people in my life. And then underneath that is going to be my health. Can we get a green light? Just about. Uh, my health. Uh, my... Clear this intersection. Nobody do anything crazy. Yeah, I think we're loading uh, some, some Jazzy Cat stuff. Maybe, maybe, and that's not Jazzy Cat's fault. I think the traffic is just super dense in this part of the world, and it's uh, there's a lot of textures to load. Could be, could be, I don't know. Speculating as always. So yeah, people at the top of the list. Underneath that, uh, my health, my uh, physical health, my spiritual and emotional health. You know, all that stuff. And then uh, underneath that, traveling. You know. Uh, my mountains. Oh, I do love me some mountains. I love them. Uh, there's a lot of things, you know. And then comes gaming. And I said earlier in the video, I'm at a, I'm at a time in my life. Wow, this has turned into, uh, this has turned into quite a trip. Jeezy Pete's that stuttering. Oh, bad. This is this is arduous. We're just trying to finish now. We're trying to get through it. Oh light oh we're gonna do it we're gonna do it i don't think we took any damage on the cargo yet let's see while we're sitting here let's see how far we have to go what all right we're gonna have to pull over somewhere and sleep in fact there's a hotel right next to us um i'll tell you what we're gonna do we're gonna go down here yeah how is that possible oh man i thought this job was like uh whatever this is this is something else. Okay, so we're going to go down here to this traffic circle. We're going to turn around. We're going to come back to this intersection, make a left. We're going to pull into that hotel. Okay. Okay. For some reason, I was thinking this was like 350 kilometers. 
And I'll check on the replay. Obviously, it's a lot more than that because... Oh, I know, I know. We're turning around right now. Um, obviously, it's a lot more than 350 kilometers because we have been... Uh, we've driven all. Jesus. Oh. Okay. This one might not see the light of day, folks. You know, that happens sometimes. I don't, did you know that? I will occasionally record a video and it's like... Oh, no. That's... That's going... Okay. All right. Yeah, occasionally I record a video and it's like, that is... That's going in the vault. It's never going to see the light of day. And this just, in the past five minutes, this just absolutely fell apart. What happened? All right, let's do this. Before we get down here, let's take a look right here. Here. Okay, no damage to the cargo. We're going to pull into this hotel and go to sleep. I'm going to gather my wits. Well, I don't, I, I have to apologize. I'm, I don't know what happened. It's like uh, everything was was going really... Oh, another red light. Everything was going pretty good. We were we were dodging bullets, and then and then we weren't. We weren't dodging the bullets anymore. They were hitting us. So what do we get? We've got like trailer damage, tickets, speeding tickets, crash vehicle tickets. And we're not even halfway there. Oh my goodness. Right. Let's get to this hotel. <laughs> and we're getting unbelievable stuttering. Right. You know what? I always wanted the channel to be about what it's like when I game. You know, like a typical sesh for old Sweet Will. And that is... Yeah, man. That is... That's so new. We we have not had those stuttering problems for the longest time. I don't know where that's coming from. <sighs> right. Uh, I'm going to try to get this thing parked a little better. But let's hop out and do a thumbnail. Set the brake. A good thumbnail. Uh, that is right there. Yeah, we'll call that our thumbnail, folks. Man, should I apologize? I am not. I'm not proud of this video. I might not even post it. But if I do, there you go. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of European Truck Simulator 2, and we'll see you next time. Take care now.